of the future will be like? Strong asset base. Safe investment. Efficient service. A network that works for you. Technologically driven and innovative customer-friendly products. Delivered by well-trained, highly motivated, and well-managed staff. With UBA, the future of banking is here. The wise choice is banking. UBA. I welcome you all to this very beautiful Thursday evening with our current affairs program, Point Blank, featuring one of the most distinguished public officers in this country as of today. And I believe that we are going to have a very exciting time having such a distinguished guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce as our guest the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Alhaji Gali Naaba. You are welcome to our studios. Thank you. Uh, this is the first time we, have, we are seeing the speaker, so <laughs> I think there's a lot of excitement uh, having you here. And in fact, at this point in time, this point in time, one year, so to say, in office, uh, this would be an opportunity for us to talk about the House of Representatives, the National Assembly, lawmaking, and then politics in Nigeria. Once again, welcome. Thank you. Well, uh, I know that not much is known about the speaker, at least as of uh, a year ago. But he's a political scientist because he read political science at Amadubele University and has been in business since then. He's now in the House of Reps and is leading that large body that is making laws in Nigeria. So he's somebody that we all must know and uh, he's somebody whose views will be most uh, needed. Well, Honorable Speaker, I, I know that this is your first time in the House of Reps and it's also exciting that this first time you're already speaker. This is a major achievement. Now, considering how it has been, uh, d do you feel equipped? Do you feel equipped for this job, considering that this is your first time and it's a major assignment, leading this large group of people from different areas, different inclinations, different interests, and so on and so forth? How well equipped do you feel? Well, uh, first of all, I did not contest election to come to the House of Representatives to become speaker. God, in his wisdom, decided that I'm going to be the speaker of the House of Representatives after about 44 days of its nomination. To that extent, I will say that uh, I have not been properly equipped. However, on becoming speaker, I felt that uh, I must assume all the responsibility that goes with the office of the speaker. The office of the speaker is a very important office in the political ladder of this country. By hierarchy, it is the most, the most, it is the fourth most important office. And by influence, it is uh, the most influential position in the polity, because uh, the office deals with all federal constituencies in Nigeria, and therefore, for anybody to hold that office successfully. He must exercise a high sense of responsibility. And uh, he also must have a good foresight. He also has to have at all times with him some degree of tolerance, some degree of consideration, and some degree of acceptance. It has been a challenging responsibility and uh, I must confess that I had never 
headed uh, any organization as large as this body. Therefore, it has been very difficult uh, in running the House of Representatives successfully, of course, there must be a period of learning. Very well. I think, I think the point is made. You, you, are, you are quite uh, straightforward about it. And I think I'm happy about the spiritual support you, you have uh, tried to draw. Uh, from what you are saying, you must have been learning a lot of lessons. Uh, can you recount the most uh, serious of these lessons, uh, what I'm trying to, to say? Do you have any regret? Is there anything that has happened in the house which you allowed, which you will not now allow, or which you did not allow, which you will not allow? Well, honestly, I cannot say that uh, I regret anything. Uh, what I felt must be done in the house, I had tried to do it and it is working well for the house. My first important task was to try to unite the house, which I successfully did. Uh, some people could remember that uh, the house used to operate along factional lines. Uh, since I came, I managed to bring everybody together to the extent that everybody now speaks for the house, not for a faction of the house. I believe that every member of the House of Representatives uh, has a stake in the house, and uh, he also has rights. And uh, it is very important for leadership to always believe that everybody must be allowed to exercise those rights. And uh, most of the other things uh, I believe I had done uh, that are said to be mistakes, I have managed to correct uh, most of them. But uh, you will remember that uh, every day uh, new issues come up. Uh, new challenges come up and uh, we have to all rise against these challenges so it is a sort of influx uh, influx of inputs and outputs together so what is important is to try to bring everybody along uh, in doing whatever we are doing and uh, that is what I have been doing Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to assure you that uh, many people watching this program now will be looking forward to you accounting for what the House of Reps has been doing in the last one year. And uh, I can assure you that there are so many criticisms, and uh, you will have to take them one after the other. Uh, le let's look at the image. Uh, the impression one gets is the House of Representatives of some very exuberant persons. Like perhaps they are too young, I don't know, but that impression is given. There's this impression that the house is so uh, exuberant that it tends to be delinquent. It goes on to arrogate to itself a lot of authority and power. As if you know you are newcomers to power and you are breathing down the truth of everybody, you are grabbing everything. And in fact, it's, it's like the, the, the house of red thinks that it can make a law now that to say I'm a woman. <laughs> because that's so much power. Uh, have, you, have you ever had the opportunity of having a feel of this image? If so, how bothered have you been about it? Well, I am not unaware of most of these criticisms. I'm fully aware of them. And uh, honestly, most of them don't bother me because I believe that a time will come when Nigerians will begin to appreciate what the House of Representatives is doing. Uh, I must admit that uh, 
members of the House of Representatives are not necessarily being exuberant. Uh, people often refer to us as boys. I'm 42 years old. I believe I'm not a boy. And uh, if you go back to the scriptures, all the prophets that uh, God had appointed to be prophets are at least 40. And therefore, if at 40, any person is given a position of responsibility, he must be respected and uh, he must be listened to. I believe that uh, this is one of the problems of our country. You see, one of the problems is that people feel and believe that unless you are 60 and above, you cannot be able to contribute anything. And uh, you'll agree with me that at 60 and above, the law of diminishing returns starts to exercise itself on the brains of people. And it is from 40 upwards, 50, 55, that people can be able to contribute to their country effectively. And uh, that is what the House of Representatives uh, is doing. We believe that uh, whatever we are doing, we are doing uh, fully aware and conscious of the fact that we are going in accordance with the letter and the spirit of the Constitution of Nigeria. Nobody had ever told us that what we have been doing has been unconstitutional. And you'll agree with me that uh, people of my own generation in the country, lots of them, we are the backbone of Nigeria. And uh, we are the people mostly affected by the misrule of dictatorship. And therefore, when we behave the way we are behaving, people should not be surprised. All we are after is to see that our country is run well. We want good governance. And uh, in this enterprise, we are uh, resentful of anything that smacks of dictatorship. We believe that nobody should dictate to us. We believe that we are Nigerians, and we believe that anybody who wants anything from us must go into dialogue with us. Because in addition to whatever responsibility we have, we believe that uh, we are relatively knowledgeable in so many areas of life, and that we can make meaningful contribution to the country. And uh, if anybody says that uh, what we are doing is unconstitutional, I challenge him to bring the Constitution and let us go through. Okay, well, you, you <laughs> I wouldn't like to say <laughs> that what you are doing is unconstitutional. That's really uh, too wide uh, an allegation to make. I'm looking at the uh, manner of behavior, uh, what each person sees in the house, like you said, Perhaps it's an overreaction, I don't know, but somehow, you know, I was talking about exuberance. You know, some time ago, the, there was some problem about whether or not people were losing confidence in the president of the Senate. And the members of the House of Reps left their own chambers, walked straight into the Senate to express their support for the Senate president. You see, if this was done in the House of Reps, there would have been no problem. But they violated the rules of movement into the Senate, and it was like a trespass. And these are the kinds of things that give people the impression that the House of Reps has some delinquent people who just behave anyhow. You know. Now, you were not there. You were outside the country. My, my question is, if you were there, would you have allowed your members to walk into the Senate? Well, um, first of all, members of the House of Representatives went into the Senate with my full knowledge and blessing. The feeling is that the Senate President 
is the head of the legislative arm of government. And uh, we are therefore, uh, uh, as members of the House of Representatives, we have a stake in whoever leads the Senate. And uh, when you have a situation whereby outside forces, forces exogenous to the, to the National Assembly, want to remove the leadership of the National Assembly at all costs, uh, the House of Representatives should not be expected to lie low. The House must definitely uh, react. Unfortunately, and, uh, unfortunately going this reaction gives an unconstitutional behavior. And, and going into the Senate, I want you to go over the rules of the Senate. The House of Representatives members are allowed to go into the Senate chamber and uh, do certain things, just as the rules of the House of Representatives allow members of the Senate to come into the chamber of the House uh, to sit. Uh, this is not unconstitutional as people want to believe. Does that rule not prescribe that you require the Senate's permission? Well, we ask them for permission. I wonder whoever said we did not ask for permission to go in. No, you see, this uh, was on television. We saw some senators protesting that uh, well, you know, coming in there was not right. Well, uh, in doing that, the permission of the deputy senate president was sought. And uh, he granted the House of Representatives members permission to do that. And uh, I believe that uh, the, deputy, the, the deputy senate president is representative of all the senators. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I've got you to be saying is that if you had been in Nigeria, you would have led the match. Certainly. Okay, that's all right. You're welcome. Now, I, I am looking at uh, what's happening in the House of Reps. Uh, somehow, you know, I'm talking about image and feeling, and one gets the impression that uh, the, the political class, particularly in the legislature, uh, places a lot of premium on patronage, you know, patronizing and all that kind of thing. And one begins to wonder, you know, a lot of people in the assembly complain. They complain against leadership. The impression we have is that those who were favorably disposed to the former speaker are now protesting the positions they hold in the House, which are coming. And that gives an impression of vindictiveness on one part. But on the other part, what I want to find out, the committees in the Senate, are they so lucrative? that when you change one man from leadership of one to the other, there's so much quarrel. What is in these committees? And why do you change them like that? Is it that you change those who supported your, your, your predecessor for people who support you now? Well, I cannot be a spokesman for the Senate because I don't interfere in the way no, I'm talking of the House of they Reps. run their committees. Uh, in the House of Representatives, since I came in, I did not change any committee chairman until uh, some time uh, in December, November or December. And uh, I had to effect such a change in order for me to be able to give some of these committees some direction. Uh, I know that I changed the chairman of the privatization and commercialization committee and put somebody there who would be able to do the work better. And uh, you can ask any member of the privatization committee to tell you the difference. I'm sure they will be able to tell you the difference. Secondly, I changed the chairman of the health committee. I thought that if I put a medical doctor there, the committee will perform better. And that was what I did. And uh, since I did that, the health committee is now becoming more vibrant. Then uh, I also uh, effect a change in one other committee, that is the Committee on National Planning. 
I put somebody there who is very knowledgeable on planning issues. And uh, you see, what I managed to do was to put uh, uh, was to put uh, people of right dispositions. No, I, 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 yeah, I think you have made that point. What what the house you have not told us? These people, these right people, were they also your close associates? Well, they had not been my close associates. But what informed my thinking is that members need not be my close associates for me to be able to work with them. I look at you, I assess you, if you can perform, I'll give you a responsibility. It is up to you to prove yourself. In the process, of course, people become close to me because they are now working closely with me. Well, okay. But if you take it globally, you, 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 you begin to want to answer this question in a broader sense. Uh, you, you've removed AD members from being chairman of committees or something of that nature. Is it that none of them is fit? Well, it is not that uh, none of them was fit or not. The thing is that we are running a system uh, that favors partisanship. We carried the AD along initially because we believe that uh, what Nigeria needs is not opposition now. Uh, rather, what we need is consolidation to consolidate democracy. And uh, we cannot afford uh, all the rancor that goes along with opposition. And uh, we gave the AD positions, not because they deserve it, because they are a minority party. According to the system, all committee chairmen must come from the majority party. I was in the United States recently, and I introduced a member of my delegation as a chairman of a committee not from the majority party. And the congressmen there were agitated. They, 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 they asked me what happened, because it is unknown in their system that a member of the opposition party is given a position. But uh, in the House of Representatives here, we give positions to other parties so that we can all work together. And whatever decisions we reach together, we expect every party, each of the parties, to go along with the decision of the House. So the reason we decided to cut the umbilical cord with uh, the AD was because whenever the House takes a decision, together with them, they will now come out, hold a press conference, and dissociate themselves from uh, the decision. Though I must confess that uh, not all the members of the AD are doing that, but you must agree with me that whatever the leadership of a party says, that is representative of the opinion, it is binding on, yeah. of, on all the members of that party. So we decided, we felt that why should the AD continue to enjoy privileges in the House? Why should we continue to reward uh, failure with success? So we decided that uh, it is better for them to go into proper opposition in the House. So you are ready for them? Of course we are ready. Very well. We get very shortly after this short break, uh, give you a chance to take some little water. When we come back, we talk about the House of Reps and the executive and all the other furor that is going on now. Thank you. Uh, stay with us.
Eyewitness News every Friday on NTA Network Service. A down to earth on the spot reportage of the people and for the people by a team of crack reporters of NTA News, the medium that has the reach. NTA Eyewitness News every Friday with Carlo Otisi. Eyewitness News catches the mood of the event hot on the NTA. It's entertainment across the board on NTA Network Service every Saturday at 9 p.m. with Nenna Ukoha. A presentation of Nigeria's rich cultural heritage and from beyond the frontiers of the great country. Music, arts and crafts, fashion, cuisine, tourism, and all the traverse of life. NTA Entertainment News brings to your living room life in the city and in the countryside too for your weekend relaxation. The Entertainment News appreciating life and its bounties every Saturday at 9 p.m. And on Sunday is the popular newsline with Abike Dabiri, a favorite package for millions of viewers. Newsline, digging the facts from deep down the people's views. A such light for the facts of the matter in all facets of life. From high society circle to the man on the street, it is the people's news all through. Newsline, the news of the news, every Sunday at 9 p.m. on NTA Network Service. <laughs> investment, efficient service, a network that works for you, and innovative customer-friendly products, delivered by well-trained, highly motivated, and well-mannered staff. With UBA, the future of banking is here. Well, let me welcome back to this second segment, Alhaji Gali Naaba, Speaker of the House of Representatives. He actually represents the Kanu Municipal Federal Constituency in the House of Reps. First time member of the House, already a speaker. He's been talking to us about what's happening in the House and why AD, the members who are from AD there, are now being placed in the opposition. Well, before we leave that, I think one issue that you need to talk about, I, I, I think I, I heard, I I read in the papers that the, the leader of the AD was going to speak in the House some time ago. You allowed him. He stood up, and as he was speaking, the House said, no, 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 suspend him. And the one was just wondering, is that, is that, that democracy, doesn't he have a right to speak? And if you have allowed him, shouldn't he be allowed to say what he wants to say? I think the minority can have his say. The majority can have his way. Why, why were your people behaving like that? Well, for the reason you just said that uh, is it not democracy of course it is because we are operating a democracy that was why I allowed the AD leader to talk in the house but uh, members of the house felt aggrieved with what he did to the house he went on television disparaging the house and the majority of the members felt that he must not talk in the house but that's his opinion it is his opinion but then uh, people wouldn't want to allow him to talk. I allowed him to talk as the presiding officer. But uh, while that was going to bring about some controversy, as I asked him to, to stop talking. And uh, while the call for his suspension was, uh, uh, was coming, I decided to ignore it because before any member is suspended, the due process must be followed. So I did not immediately 
uh, allow him to be suspended. The House leadership is looking into this uh, problem and uh, it will take appropriate decisions. Okay. So, so the idea is for us not to rush, ju uh, to not to rush to judgment, okay. and not to refrain from judgment. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I know that everybody is, is, is waiting to, to listen to the conflict between the the, pres the presidency or the executive and then the legislature, particularly the House of Reps, because you you are here to speak for the House of Reps. And what's what's interesting to all of us is this appropriation law, this budget thing, because if it doesn't come out, we don't even get our pay. So we are all, agi we are all agi ag uh, agitated. Uh, I, I don't know. Honorable Speaker, does the House of Reps have a right to appropriate money for itself? Uh, tell you what the Constitution says about appropriations. First of all, the, the, the Constitution says that the President shall cause to be prepared and lay before, the assembly. before each House of the National Assembly estimates of revenue and expenditure. These are estimates. And uh, whenever these estimates come before us and the Senate, they are just spending proposals. The Constitution went on to say that no amount of money can be spent from the Consolidated Revenue Fund except in the manner prescribed by the National Assembly. The key words there uh, manner and prescribed. And uh, I would like anybody who is knowledgeable in the English language to go and analyze these two words, manner and prescription. So the intention of the Constitution is that the legislature is supposed to uh, prioritize what and what the, the, the national budget uh, intends to achieve. However, people have been interpreting the Constitution the way they like. Some people are of the opinion that the National Assembly has no right to appropriate. Some people are of the opinion that the National Assembly has no right to allocate whatever that means, because I don't see any uh, difference between appropriation and allocation. And uh, some people, uh, some lawyers for that matter, uh, people like Professor Umwabuzi, I'm sorry to say, who uh, erroneously said that uh, the National Assembly has no right to increase the spending level, but it can decrease. Yeah, you see, all of these uh, distortions are self-serving. The legislature, like you asked, of course, has the right to appropriate money to itself. If it doesn't do that, who will do it? The legislature is an independent arm of government. It is not an appendage of the executive. So is the judiciary. And therefore, no one arm of government should determine what the other arm of government spend. This is the nature of the system we operate. And uh, therefore, having the executive interfering in what the National Assembly spend or in what the judiciary spend is an aberration. Okay. Just as we don't interfere with what the presidency uh, or the state house spends, mm. we believe that we are all men of honor. And uh, what we are doing, people say that uh, we have allocated so much money to the National Assembly. But people don't take into account that this National Assembly has not been around for a very long period of time. The executive arm of government and the judicial arm of government have been around for so long. They are fully developed. They have all 
the infrastructure they need in terms of uh, physical infrastructure, personnel, uh, logistics, transportation, and uh, so on and so forth. When we came in May, we only had a budget of about 250 million naira by the from the military. And uh, we therefore found it very difficult to operate. And uh, people don't take into account that when 469 people come into an institution, you don't expect the same number of staff that have been there while well, nobody was there to continue to service that institution. You have to employ more people and people of caliber, people uh, high, you know, people who are supposed to be on grade level 16, 15, 17. I'm sure Nigerians know this. They, 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 they a lot of people don't know. And then you also have to, uh, to, to hire, uh, because we have so many committees, we have a system of committees in the house, uh, which is uh, in, the, in the executive, you have the ministries uh, as a corresponding institution. You, so you need staff yes. to man the committees. No, I know you can You justify. need transportation for them. You need houses for them. You need a whole lot of things for them. I know you can justify the expenditure which you are asking for. But that is not really my problem. What is the your real problem? problem is this. You are, you've quoted from the Constitution, and I listened to you, and I'm wondering if the Constitution says the President shall cause to be prepared and for the National Assembly. And you now do for yourself. Now, where in the Constitution do you find that? Because the President is supposed to present to you. You now present to yourself. Is that what the Constitution says? Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, before the President presented his uh, estimates, the National Assembly sent its estimates to the executive. And uh, when the spending estimates come from the executive, the National Assembly estimate was not there. You can only find the estimate in the uh, in the uh, in the voluminous uh, copies of the budget that was brought to us, but in the bill that was not there. And secondly, when those estimates were prepared, the Ministry of Finance rushed the staff of the National Assembly to prepare those estimates. We were then on recess. Before we came back from recess, they had submitted those estimates. So there was no input from us, members of the National Assembly. So that was what happened. And uh, we believe that the way we do our appropriations for every ministry to either increase the budget for a particular ministry or decrease, we believe that the National Assembly could also be subject uh, to that kind of thing. Because needs arise from time to time. Uh, you will recall that uh, in the course of the appropriation, when we were about to finish, the executive sent more proposals to us. These are proposals that were not brought along with the initial proposal. So this kind of thing, these kinds of things happen. Okay, well, I listened to Professor Wambuze uh, when he, he made this address you were referring to, and uh, somehow I think I gathered a few things from it. Uh, like you have pointed out, if what is given to the assembly is not enough or assembly was not considered, I think what is open to the assembly is to use uh, liaison and relationship with the executive to ensure that a proposal is brought and not for the assembly to take the laws into his hands, so to say, and say we want 20-something billion for the National Assembly. Without it, we will not approve anything. You know, the kind of things that the rest of us are hearing, we are not there. We may not be right. But my, pro my problem is, can, we, can you really defend the National Assembly's attitude
to governance. Don't you think the National Assembly behaves as if it can do and undo? Because there is even this belief that you have uh, come out with what you call the contract with Nigeria. Very well made. Now, the, the long and short of it is that you are seeking to execute a lot of things for Nigeria. Are you in the executive? Well, uh, with all sense of responsibility, I want to tell you that uh, the National Assembly has not uh, ever presented itself in the manner you just uh, described it. We don't believe we can do and undo. But uh, the National Assembly has a responsibility. And uh, it must uh, discharge those responsibilities. Uh, people believe that only the executive is right. Because the executive is so developed, the executive has all the machinery of propaganda, and uh, the executive is so powerful. And like I told you earlier, the executive is not superior to the legislature. And uh, in fully developed democracies, when we talk about democracy, they look to the legislature, not to the executive, because the legislature is nearer the people. So in the National Assembly or the legislature uh, is not or has never presented itself in the way you have uh, just described it. And uh, if there is any such impression, uh, I want to tell viewers that uh, that impression should it's not... It's not uh, correct. It's not correct. Very well. Thank you. I think that's... And uh, the other aspect of your question is that uh, you talk about the contract with Nigeria. With Nigeria. There is nowhere in the contract that we said we are going to execute anything. So how do you ensure they are All done? we did was to say that we are going to legislate. And when we legislate, it is up to the executive to implement. When we legislate, we make laws on certain things. That is to say, we are going to influence policy through legislation, which is itself revolutionary. And uh, the executive, uh, since we are in this business together, all we are doing is to serve our people. And whatever we want to do, or we say we are going to do, we believe is going to serve the people right. So if what we do is right, the executive should go along and, and execute it and cooperate with us and execute it. So that is the intention. <laughs> and there is nowhere in that document that anybody said the legislature is going to execute. Okay. We kept saying that we are going to legislate. And we are doing that. We are legislating on a lot of things. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm, I don't know whether... This is something that should go, but we must ask it. Not long ago, we started hearing about possibility of an impeachment of the speaker, possibility of bringing back the former speaker through the back door. And uh, the rest of us were worried. Is the House of Reps so timid that it will open its eyes and allow somebody it has discredited to be brought back? Or is it that you can't vouch for your men in terms of inducement? You think they can be given money and they will just throw things away? Why is there so much tension about it? Somebody coming back being impeached. Is it a possibility? Well, the you see, the, it's the, the thing is not about you know the former speaker. Uh, what the house, the message that the house is trying to 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 send is that people outside the national assembly must not must not under any circumstance try to influence what goes on in the National Assembly, particularly with respect to the leadership of the National Assembly. But your members are courageous and strong enough to resist any influence like that. Well, that is why, that is what I'm telling you. I, what I'm telling you is that the message the House wants to send is that no matter how highly placed, 
should interfere with the workings of the National Assembly. Okay. They are comfortable in the House of Representatives. I believe that the way the House is now, everybody is satisfied with leadership. And nobody has peace or about uh, the thing is that don't interfere. Any, nobody should therefore interfere. Is every member of the House of Reps thinking the same thing, or if they are outside interference? I want to assure you that uh, representatives will collect money to undermine the House. Okay. I don't mind. Maybe I know about four, five, six persons who have been doing that, but from them, nobody in the National Assembly uh, would collect money to undermine the House of Representatives. Mm. Well, some time ago when they changed the House of Representatives, you became Speaker, a lot of people clapped for democracy. Uh, and the impression we got was that if you the House very well, you still find one or two persons who should not be there because of poor qualification or misrepresentation of facts. Uh, somehow, we have not heard anything about these people. It's like the House is waiting for the media to expose these people again. Couldn't you have set up a strategy to refurbish the House, get out the bad eggs, so that you can have on, be on a clean slate? Why haven't you done that? Well, uh, the responsibility for screening people who will stand for election is squarely on the Independent National Electoral, Co Electoral Commission. And it is this body, if there are any mistakes, it is this body that did those, committed those mistakes. Uh, what we do in the House of Representatives, we do according to due process. You don't just, be, you don't just uh, bring an allegation against a member and the House just takes it up like that. Because anybody can do that to anybody. We believe that uh, any allegation should come against any There has to be a due process. And uh, it is the absence of this due process that uh, makes the House feel that people cannot prove what they see. If any member of the public feels that he has anything against any member of the House of Representatives or the Senate. Uh, let him come forward. Bring evidence, evidence. Uh, bring his affidavit. Then definitely the House will uh, cause the complaint to be looked into. We I'm, have a, I'm aware of that. We have an Ethics and Privileges Committee. Yes, I'm aware of that. What I'm asking is an in-house mechanism. Like, for example, now you know of four or five people who collect money and misbehave, and they are still there. Shouldn't there be a method of disposing of such Collect persons? money and misbehave? I don't understand. No, you Can you when I was talking about, uh, do you think people in the house will collect money? You say, well, maybe one, two, three, that they are significant. What I'm saying, even if it's one person who is, who is not properly there, shouldn't the house have an internal mechanism for detecting, exposing that person and throwing him out to have a clean house? If the rest of us don't complain, so you will keep somebody who is bad. Well, we are not uh, in the business of witch hunting people. We believe that uh, if anybody has anything to hide, uh, the public, of course, uh, will expose him. For example, we have we have one member of the house who is being who is whose case is now in court. Uh, the allegation against him is that he has forged. Uh, documents to come into the National Assembly. Uh, not only, uh, not only with respect to his uh, qualifications, but also electoral documents like uh, voters card, voters voters register, and things like that. The, the case is currently in court, okay. and uh, the court is supposed to decide. If the court decides that. 
he has not won election or he has forged documents definitely when the court writes to the house the the member will definitely automatically be uh, withdrawn from the house okay honorable speaker thank you so much uh, it's been quite interesting listening to you i must say that uh, quite a lot from you I, I find you on this program showing that you are a full-fledged democrat wanting the due process and wanting everybody to do his own part you are not prepared to go into investigations meant for INEC. You are not prepared to uh, execute because you are a legislator. And I think that that is what democracy is all about. And Nigeria must be the uh, person to benefit from all this that you have said. So we thank you for finding time for your credit program to be with us today. Listening to 15 minutes on <laughs> the assembly, the executive. And I must say that it has really been point blank. Coming straight and being sincere with your answers. And I think we are looking forward to real leadership in this present dispensation. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you. Alaji Gali Naba is a speaker of the House of Representatives. He's been in business before then, business of import and exports. And uh, he went to school all through Kanu, uh, primary, secondary, basic studies, before going to ABU in 1976. He read political science and has been representing Kanu Municipal Federal Constituency in the House of Reps, where he's now also the speaker. He's been 15 minutes on Point Blank. Next Thursday, at this same time, we'll bring you another guest on the program. Good night. Ever wonder what the bank of the future will be like? Strong asset base. Investment. Efficient service. A network that works for you. Technologically driven and innovative customer friendly products. Delivered by well trained, highly motivated, and well mannered staff. With UBA, the future of banking is here. So why choice in banking? UBA. Thank you.